the ugliest items in WoW Mad Season Show. The thumbnail already looks fantastic. Oh, dude, this is one of the things that I miss about not having transmog, though. Like, when you see someone running around, you could tell they were a noob just by how they looked. And there was some real utility with that. And when someone, on the other hand, had, like, Naxxramas gear, you could just tell they were badass just by the way they were running around. And there is something really cool about that. But yeah, these are the ugliest items in WoW, so don't be caught wearing any of these things. Classic World of Warcraft. Released shortly after the dawn of MMOs. A time of discovery and wonder. Season of and discovery. Awful looking gear. Behold, the slayer of the elemental lord of fire. Conqueror of Metharian. Destroyer of the old god. Bow before his ultimate might. It's charming in a way, but also... A Speaking of transmog, now that is a transmog, dude. The mad season OG look. Mmm, looking good, brother. Been ridiculous, with Blizzard themselves even acknowledging it. In the wrath of the Lich King Dalaran and the sewers, you'd find the NPC High Warlord Uro. This is a reference to a player of the same name, and when spoken to, he remarks that only a fool would mock the appearance of my battle garb. This raiment of well worn steel is from an ancient place of learning. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do today. There are plenty of ugly weapons or armor pieces in the game, but something we should take into consideration is how or where you get them. This mace is awful, but it's from a level 10 quest, so it makes sense. Yeah. That's fine. It's only when something drops from an ultra high-end raid, or is crafted from the bones of 10,000 virgins at the top of a volcano, is when the expectation of it looking semi-presentable is set. Yeah. So, with that being said, let's start with the granddaddy of ugly weapons in the game. And that's the Bone Reaver's Edge. Forged from the bones of those who fell before the elemental lord of fire, Ragnaros, this weapon boasts a 75.9 damage per second, 16 stamina, 1% crit, -E. and a proc where your attacks ignore 700 of your enemy's armor for 10 seconds, stacking up to 3 times. Uh, uh, uh. One of the best two-handers in the entire game, and it's every warrior's wet dream, believed to be the best for two-handed fury warriors oh. in all of vanilla, even through the next Ramus raid. And it looks like a broken popsicle stick. Seriously, it's the size of one-hander. Here's the Bone Reaver's Edge, and here's a Skullforge Reaver. Yeah, My theory it's is true. that in the midst of designing it, the artist got distracted, or went on lunch break, and just forgot to finish it. No way. That explains the jagged edge and the poop color, but the good thing is that it keeps you low-key on the battlefield. Like, who are you gonna attack? A Sulphurus Warrior? Or Bro, I still think, like, fr it's 2024, people are playing retail there's a billion different weapons out i still think hand of rag and thunder fury are two of the best looking weapons in the game ever even to this day like look how are you kidding me like hand of rag and thunder fury just are just and, and uh war glaives war glaives and tbc like is it am i biased because i i saw them as a kid and they were rare maybe maybe there's some bias here they're just so iconic and so cool looking. Thunder Fury, Hand of Rag, and Warglaives are just so cool. Ashbringer's up there too. Sure. Man, we should just watch the the coolest items in Classic Wild. Does Matt Season have a video of those? Like oh. Sulphurus Warrior. Or someone who looks like they just dinged 60 and got their green quest sword. And it's not as far from the truth as you'd think, because it shares the same model as the level 30 whirlwind sword from the warrior quest. It's just a different color. The Whirlwind Sword, though, is hard to get. Whirlwind Sword is from a really, really hard quest chain. Maybe whoever made this at Blizzard thought it actually looked cool, and they put it at the end of a really hard quest chain, and they put it at the end of uh, a really hard boss, and they're like, okay, yeah, this looks... Maybe maybe Blizzard does think this looks cool. He thought he was Regardless cooking, yeah. Regardless look, though, to this day, the Bone Reaver's Edge still gives warriors a boner. True. Next, though, we have some armor. Deep within the Blackrock Mountain is the Blackrock Depths, an entire city carved alongside the home of the Fire Lord and ruled by the great Emperor Thorison. 
Those brave enough to fight their way through the city and face the king himself are rewarded with a variety of powerful relics with which to equip themselves. The epic Iron Foe Hammer, which on proc grants two extra hits on your next swing, the Deadly Dreadforge Retaliator, which is a nice beginner two-hander, or a cloak called the Emperor's New Cape. Well, let's see what it looks like. Wait. Okay, pardon my French here, but what the F? Well, that's one way to save time. Wait, I never knew that. What? Did they forget to put a model in? Well, and there's an interesting story behind it, actually. Oh. It's a reference to the short story, The Emperor's New Clothes, by 1800s Danish writer Hans Christian Andersen. Oh, I didn't know that. In this. an unnamed world, there is a vain but simple emperor. One day, a couple of scoundrels hatched a plan. They proclaimed to the emperor that they were master tailors, and that they were capable of crafting clothes so fine and so elaborate that they were invisible to the naked eye of those too stupid or incompetent to appreciate their beauty. They requested extravagant and expensive materials with which to make the clothes, such as fine silk and gold thread. After weeks of stalling, they presented the invisible clothes to the emperor, and to his dismay, he saw nothing. But he wasn't a fool, he thought. He wouldn't have his servants believe him to be too incompetent to see the luxurious garments, so he played along. He stripped himself of his garb and donned the magnificent clothing he was promised. He stood there naked in front of his people for all to see, and they thought to themselves, our king would not think of us as fools, and they praised the beautiful fabric and patterns. <laughs> it's a story on forsaking free thought for the sake of being accepted by those around you <laughs> and buying into mob mentality. So, long story short, <laughs> right this cloak is a reference to this tale. The Emperor's New Cape. Oh, it's good. Does it really belong on the list then? Probably not, but I just felt like telling the tale. Sometimes less is That's more, cool. however, I never knew that. and most would say that this is the case for the original Tier 2 sets. The loot for the Molten Core was thrown together quite quickly, and up until patch 1.4, one would be able to obtain both Tier 1 and Tier 2 from the raid. In this patch, Tier 2 was removed from everything but Regnaros and Nixia, later to be saved for the next raid tier, which was the Blackwing Lair. But that wasn't the only thing that was different with these sets. We all know the Tier 1 armor sets, all completely unique models, and tailored to match their respective classes to provide style as well as stats. So Tier 2 you would think would be an improvement in both areas. While in general they were more powerful, in the looks department they were less than impressive. Players were disappointed to find that every single one were recolors of low-level questing armor as the developers ran out of time and scrambled to throw together these fashion disasters. The Wrath set used that old horned helmet that you see all over the game, the priests turned into Aladdin cosplayers, and druids roleplayed as cabbage. And warlocks copied priests. Well, someone has to change. The only one that looked decent was the rogue's blood fang which was just a red recolor of their Shadowcraft dungeon set. Can you believe that it was as late as patch 1.9 that these were finally updated to the sets we all know and love, and players hmm. finally decided to check on their Show Helm option yeah. and their interface menu. Lesser known still, however, are the original Tier 1 models. So, you've finally done it. You've grinded for months, and at last, you've obtained level 60, and you ran dungeons that held the most difficult challenges you've ever faced. You're ready to take it to the next level, the Molten Core. Not a 5-man, but rather a 40-player raid that only the most elite players would overcome. Such an extreme task deserves extreme rewards, however. Behold the legendary armaments of the Core, the fabled artifacts guarded so preciously by the minions of Ragnaros. The Defender of McDonald's. <laughs> we have what are essentially four unique armor sets. One for cloth, one for leather, then mail and plate. All the same model, but okay, sharing different colors. I didn't color. know the, the original tier one or the original tier two looks so bad. I, did you, am I the only one here? I had no idea. I had no clue here. Let me move my camera to, to this. Like, bro, look at these things. That's really good. Uh, actually, the rogue one's kind of cool. The rogue one's actually decent. All, yeah, the rogue ones are always kind of cool. But yeah, the, the rest are absolute trash. Cool. Good thing they updated it. ...for each armor type. The crazy few who were able to clear the Molten Core fast enough were wowed by these amazingly fashionable armor sets. 
and it wasn't until patch 1.3 through 1.6 that they were downgraded to these walking abominations that we know today. And even the tier 0 dungeon set had some awkward looking placeholders. Prior to patch 1.4, this is what they looked like. As you can see, some are completely different, and others just had a different head. The only exception here is the rogue, which was complete in its introduction, actually. Why is the rogue one always cool? Whoever made the rogue one was just a giga chad from the get-go. The eyesores here, I think, are the priests and shamans, and to a lesser extent the hunters. Like many others on the list, it looks like they never dinged past level 40. I remember on my paladin seeing level 60s with that awesome winged light forge helmet the banana. and wanting to grind to the max level so I could get one myself, and being disappointed that by the time I reached it, it was changed to the McDonald's hat. <laughs> Call me a hipster, but I always thought that the original paladin helmet looked cooler. In fact, there's a neat little reference to this old school set in the old town of Stormwind. Here you can find an NPC named Dave the Quick who has oh, cool. the original set, helmet and all. And he even has the old school seal of righteousness from Classic. One of the few survivors of Blizzard's relentless pruning. Oh, that is pretty These cool. weren't the only model updates, however. As mentioned previously, the loot in the Molten Core was thrown together rather quickly. And there were a handful of random items that also received graphical updates in the same patch as the Tier 2 upgrade. Here's the original Core Hound Tooth model. Hmm, well maybe it was a baby Core Hound. If two core hounds have sex, is it considered a foursome? What? Speaking what are of we... drilling though, what? the original drill bore disc had an actual drill attachment. Although it looks like you'd take it with you to kill Hogger. The original obsidian edge blade was a bit more curvy. Hmm. You see those warriors from Azeroth? They've got curved swords. Curved swords. You know, I got a similar Bad thing season. going on with okay, my. Okay, we got it. Or, you know what? Never mind. Bro, we got it, man. Perdition's Blade yeah. also saw an update, changing from a level 20. Bro, Perdition's is one of the coolest items ever still to this day, I think. It is such a cool dagger. So cool. A dagger with a fiery enchant to Ragnaros' fingernail. The Staff of Dominance. Oh, yeah. I'll move my camera here. Yeah, guys, check, out, check this out. Yeah, this was the original, and then they made it to this. Like, are you kidding me? Like, are you kidding me? Look at that. You really like that orange glowy stuff? I mean, bro, are you are you a Perdition's hater? Are you like this is the cool so with freaking fire enchant to Ragnaros' fingernail? The staff of dominance was fifty percent less dominant. Just a staff of dominance was always one of my favorite staffs. I, I like that it's low key. Yeah. Be of the staff of Jordan here, but with a little extra glow. That was their band aid, I guess. It's a level thirty model, but let's just put on a special glow and call it a day. The Gunt Gore Ripper also looked like a random level 30 dagger. Here you can see a rogue with Gunt Gore, Core Hound Tooth, and the Blood Fang Helmet, all with their original models. That's kinda dope. Now that's old school. But that's enough of the old models. Something unique with raiding in Classic are resist fights. In your character sheet, you'll notice a selection of elemental resistances that you can stack. In these raids, there are a handful of fights that pretty much require a high resistance to a certain element. Fire resist is beneficial for Ragnaros, Frost for Saffron and Xramis, and Nature for Huhuran and the Temple of Ankiraj. The issue, however, is that, especially in regards to Nature resist, a lot of the required pieces were low level. There's some in Maradin, Berserfin Downs has some, so instead of using the updated Tier 2 models that we reviewed earlier, and those other grand armaments, you'd use this. <laughs> you'd be able to kill the boss, yeah, but you also look like you just walked out of the thrift store. <laughs> That's you know kinda what? cool though. Give me my old gear back. I might be a corpse, but at least I'll look good. You can also, of course, obtain gear from the PvP in the game through the rank 14 system. Oof. Overall, they all look pretty good. The glorious alliance plate and the barbaric horde leather. They do share models between armor types, but at least they look good. Yeah, they Most look people dope. would agree that they're decent. Well, everyone except Tommy, I guess. Like, I don't even understand what it is that I'm fighting. I don't understand why it is that I get my ass stopped by these fucking coneheads. <laughs> I can charge them, and as I am charging, I am slamming on my it buttons that off. only hit hamstring, and I'll miss! 
as in not like it swings and misses, I won't get a hamstring at all. At all. If my only intent on attacking him is to get a hamstring, how the fuck can I miss it? Bro, I'm gonna I run up. I just missed again! What the Bro. fuck? <laughs> but overall, nothing really stands out as... Oh, good lord. Yeah, the Did I mention cabbage earlier? My condolences in advance to any Alliance Hunters out there. Yeah, that's bad. Because this is the rare set that you eventually complete at rank 10, it's otherwise bad. known as a Cabbage Patch Kid. Luckily, if you forego bathing and break up with your non-existent girlfriend, <laughs> the rank True. 13 epic set does actually look pretty nice. So maybe that'll serve as some motivation to make the push. Speaking of which, what are you doing still watching this video? Go show those level 48s just how much of a champion you really are. Before you do though, like the video if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next Take episode. Some more level 48s, dude. Dude. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Peace. Man, uh, now I hope uh, Mad Season has a video of like the the uh, best looking items in Classic WoW. Because there's so many cool items, man. We talked about Perdition's Thunder Fury, uh, Hand of Rag. Uh, Staff of Dominance, I think, is really cool. There's so many good, iconic items. Yeah. Like, every two tiers. Yeah, Sawbone shirt. Four shoulder pads on each side. Oh, on the, on the, on the Grand Marshal stuff? Yeah. Cool, man. Well, something most replayed. I, I didn't know that these old tier models looked so bad and they updated them. The Warrior one looks similar. The Rogue one, too. But all these, like, that's really good. Um, and then... I had no idea that they just updated all these models in general. I started playing in 2004. Uh, I can't remember which month in 2004. Maybe a little bit after the game came out. Like a month after the game came out. And I don't remember this. I mean, I was just a kid, so I guess that makes sense. But, but I don't remember any of these old models. Like, none of them. So...